Hey guys, it is Safe and Sarah. We're both real estate agents in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, working with Jump Realty. In today's video, we will be talking about uh, the rental prices in Windsor and uh, what different kind of issues a landlord or a tenant could face. Exactly, and let's go into it. Let's go. So there's a lot of people just asking about the average prices here in Windsor, especially for investors who are planning to buy houses and rent it here, and also for the tenants who are planning to move from different, different provinces or even from the GDA or different areas in to Windsor. And I would say um, the average prices would be, uh, let's just start for example, for a single house that has three bedrooms with the two bathroom. Uh, it depends for sure on the areas, but they're the most expensive areas in Windsor would be South Windsor, uh, Deventure Heights, uh, La Salle, Lakeshore, Tecumseh. And the, I would say the cheapest is uh, uh, downtown Windsor. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit it's, it's it's a little bit cheaper uh, because the houses there it's a little bit they are a little bit older than the houses in, in all these areas and also it's a, it's more uh, it's busier yeah and it's gonna it's also gonna depend on the age of the house the way it's conditioned the size and of course location just like Sarah was saying uh, so for three bedrooms uh, mm -hmm. three three bedrooms home single family home with uh, let's say one bathroom so for a house like this in uh, in the downtown area which is the cheapest i would say roughly around two thousand dollars on average you can get something uh something livable not perfect not bad something in the middle yeah and in south windsor all these surrounding areas would be uh from 2100 till 3000 uh most of them i would say like the very clean houses three bedrooms with the two bathroom would be 2500 or 2400 $2, yeah that's a single family home the problem like here there are a lot of units like you can it's really hard to find a house that's just a single house by itself because in those areas the homes are a little bit bigger so uh, mainly you're going to be look you're going to be looking for people like at listing uh, like a main floor or a basement so it's going to mm -hmm. be even like tougher to find a full house because they are big and when they are big, like you're gonna be paying at least three thousand or maybe even more for for a raised ranch in South Windsor. Yeah, and and for a lot of tenants who are looking for uh, for a, a good budget, they they don't want to pay too much for rent. Uh, they would just rent a, a unit in the house. That would be a very good deal for them. But for the uh, for a lot of, like a big family or something, they're gonna prefer for sure like a single house in a good area. Uh, which is the surrounding areas in Windsor uh, uh, that's a little bit further than uh, mm -hmm. downtown Windsor. Yeah, sometimes you can find a good deals like uh, like there is a house Sarah and I were say seeing yesterday. It's listed for only nineteen fifty. It was a nice house, like a two story home. But the the the, all, the problem with those homes is that uh, it's not the problem, but like the reason why they are cheaper is that the, the landlords are picky because they wanna they wanna get a lot of offers and they wanna cherry pick the good ones. So a lot of people will show interest, but like the landlord will not accept all of them. They will only cherry pick the good ones, and that's why they have listed for a lower price to grab more attention. Yeah, and, and one, one situation just happened to me that I have a tenant. They were like five, a uh, family of five, and there was like a single house with a three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Uh, but the landlord didn't accept them, and they were also working. Like the, uh, the, da their, the father was, was a teacher and his mother was on disability and they're both getting income and the kids are getting income as well but they didn't get they didn't accept them because they were five and i asked the listing agent why like where's the problem of just like five people in the in the three bedrooms uh, house and she said like the landlord is very picky and the landlord just wanted like three or two people in that big house which is which is really tough to find a, a, like a family of two or three people living in that big house but this is what the landlord prefer. Yeah, that's right. Landlords are a little bit picky. I understand why, because uh, the way the system is made up is uh, it's kind of favoring the tenants with the uh, the Residential Tenancy Act or RTA. They favors the tenants a lot, not the landlord. Like if someone is not paying rent, someone making issues in the house, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get them evicted from the house. It's very hard for the landlord. So that's why they need to be very wise like Sarah and I, when we choose someone uh, for, because we, we have properties listed for lease. So when we choose someone to uh, to lease a home, like we choose a tenant, we are helping the landlord choose a tenant. 
we try to dig deep down we try to find the, out what's happening with their past life what's happening with their all a previous landlord yeah. all of those details because at the end of the day it's uh it's it's gonna be it's gonna be backfire at, at the landlord if something happens they're gonna go mm -hmm. sue them it's gonna take months to evict a tenant yeah. and that's gonna cost them a lot of money and we actually take responsibility of that so when we rent the house it feels like it's our house especially if it's like that that person is an investor and he lives outside of windsor we feel that this house is our house and we are responsible for it so we have to find a very good tenant and it's not only about income like there's a lot of people just have an income but they are like not the best tenants like it's personally like when you know them you're gonna find out that this is not the perfect this is not looking for a perfect hundred percent but there's some people are just like their their behavior or uh, they are not very fit for that house so we really need to be careful it's not about income there's a lot of uh, people that i know uh, they are rented with somebody else uh, but they rented for a good tenant they were actually getting like a very good income but they didn't pay the rent for six or seven months and they were they showed their bank statement and they have a, uh they have a very good job but they were, they were not paying the rent for six or seven months until they got a, uh, an eviction order from the court so the the thing is not only uh showing these papers bank statements actually meeting them in person and and try to understand uh, those people and what are they thinking ask questions like uh, how do you live where's your family like do you have any relative any kids any uh, what is your background this is how we know uh, like the tenants that we're trying to run this property for yeah so that's why like landlords need to be picky when they're choosing because they're choosing them maybe for life maybe for a couple of years only but like they need to be very picky because most landlords have have their paying mortgage so when and when you're paying mortgage it's something on you like how you have to get this money but so if you get a bad tenant and they don't pay rent then you're you're in trouble in trouble for months until you get them out from this home mm -hmm. uh and also like if you compare the rents in windsor between the other uh other places like for example let's compare it with the with the gta so in the gta a two-bedroom apartment you can get it for 25 2500 like in somewhere in that range uh it also depends of course on the age of the uh the on, condo, on the area for sure on the area but like here in windsor you can get a two bedroom apartment for 16. it yeah. depends like you guess you can get something for 2000 but like it depends on the size and age something some something average let's say 17 18 also this is going to be different from area to area so let's say for uh, for example, in downtown Windsor, you can get something for two bedrooms, maybe fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, but in South Windsor, for sure, you're not gonna find something less than seventeen or eighteen hundred. And there's not a lot of condos in South Windsor. It's mostly all like single houses or units, unit in in like a uh, single house. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, if you see the difference, like uh, we're saying on on Mississauga or like in the GTA, it's twenty five hundred. But here, let's say it's fifteen hundred, so that's a thousand in difference. And Windsor is significantly less. But if you compare the value of those of those condos, like condos, so if you compare the value of those condos, like here in Windsor, you can get a condo of two bedroom for starting from two hundred thousand, and of course it goes up to four hundred, depends on the age and the area. But you can get something reasonable for like two hundred or two fifty. But there is nothing in the GTA less than five hundred thousand. So it's half, it's half the price, but the rent is not half. That's why a lot of investors from different provinces, different places go and invest in Windsor because it's cash flowing. Yeah, this is the point. Like I'm not, not so many people know the market here in Windsor and we always try to explain it in all our videos. Uh, the thing is there's a lot of people investing in Windsor because the rent is not uh, too low uh, to comparing to GTA or even like a different province, let's say for example, uh, uh, BC. But the houses are like a huge difference. It's, uh, uh, as Safe said, like it's 50% uh, difference in the, in, the ha in the average of selling the prices. So for, for if, if like a house sold here for 800 would be uh, maybe 1.5 or 1.4 in GTA or different province. But for the rent is not that huge difference. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why a lot of investors buying here are renting. Yeah, they buy here for so many reasons, affordable housing, 
and the weather is good so some people sometimes will compare Windsor to Calgary to choose their best place uh it's, it's a tough comparison but like in terms of in terms of affordability for homes they are similar but uh, if you're looking for a future for the place i i believe that windsor has a better future because the weather in calgary is so bad and and it's something unfortunately you cannot no, nobody can change mm -hmm. but uh, here in windsor it's, it's it's developing it's getting bigger it's getting busier so many factories so many like there's a bridge that's going on a lot of yeah. lot of lot of future plans for Windsor. So yeah, which it's makes close. It... Yeah, the good thing it's close to the border. Uh, there's a lot of people who prefer even like living in Windsor than London because here is kind of close to the U.S. But in London, it's kind of not very close to the GTA, neither to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of there's a lot of people just prefer to live in Windsor. Uh, also, as as I said, like the weather here is very good. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of investors are buying houses here in Windsor and rented. Uh, they are like uh, maybe a duplex or a triplex or even a fourplex and they are renting all of it and they're making a very good cash flow. We have helped a lot of people buying here in Windsor and we also rented for them. We help them with the, uh, with the process of buying and also with the process of renting and they're not even living here in Windsor where we did all of this remotely. We help people from Vancouver, people from uh, Alberta, from the GTA to buy and invest in Windsor. And everything will be done like remotely, like because uh, people living far, we don't want them to spend a lot of money and go for the flight. So we choose the house, we film it, we we help them find the perfect fit for them, and uh, then we put conditions for like inspections and stuff like that. So in, while while uh, if the house is sold conditionally, they come and fly in or drive into Windsor and they can check their house if they like to. And uh, after the house, the sale is closed and everything is done, we start working on renting the home. And we've done this several times. We help them and not a lot of people are cash flowing of this because uh, we know the area and we know to find the good houses here. And we know which ones are cash flowing and which one are not. So if you need any help, reach us out. And with that being said, we're not being very strict with the tenant. We're also being very flexible with both sides, landlord and the tenant. And the people who work with us, they know exactly how we deal with both sides. And we help a lot of tenants getting, the, getting uh, houses for rent. At the end of the day, we want uh, the tenant to find the home and we want the landlord to find a good tenant. So that's the yes. whole goal. That's the main, the main goal. But we just try trying to avoid bad tenants and uh, trying to get good people in a nice home. That's all. Helped a lot of tenants, and we didn't face any even like a single issue with them. Uh, we are also finding a lot of ways to make it uh, easier for the tenant to get houses. Like let's say, for example, paying uh, five six months in advice just to make the landlord feel more comfortable with these tenants just in case these people have a low income but they want this house so we're gonna make it happen for you we're gonna do our best of course so i guess that's the end of the video if you guys enjoyed it let uh, subscribe to the channel leave us a like and uh, put us a comment like if you have any question ask us or mm -hmm. give us a call our numbers will be here and also they will be in the description of this video yeah. and let us know what you want to watch in the next video just give us some ideas and we're gonna make it happen to you Bye-bye.